Let's give it up for our next TED Like Talk. Hello everyone. So a little bit of a change on the title. So it's not going to be on healthcare specifically. It's going to be on all experiences, but I have taken the example of healthcare. So let's start. And you're going to see more of these cats on my presentation. So please bear with it. And hello again. No. So hello again, I'm Deepshika. I'm working at Logitech. And I'm currently designing for all the gaming mouse softwares. That's an exciting job. So I'm working on that. And without further ado, we can go to the presentation. So there are two screens over here, A and B. So which one do you think it's most scary? Is it A? So I see everyone telling A. And B is kind of looking like a little bit calm, and it looks a little more beautiful. And let's see why. So emotionally, many people will say that B is safe just because it looks good, it looks so arranged, it looks calming. But actually, logically, if you see, there are so much of data extra on the screen of A. And logically, that should be your safe screen because if you have so much of data, then you can be prepared for anything that's coming up before. So logical thinking would take a step back and emotional thinking comes forward. The next question, prosthetics. So the earlier speaker was talking about people with disabilities. So we have seen people wearing uh, wooden legs or made of some plastics and steels. So why not we can't have these kind of cyborg hands or cyborg legs? That would be cool. We have seen in so much of sci-fi films. But what's the reason of having the prosthetics in our own skin color? So this is a step ahead of functionality and usability. So the four principles that people follow to design these prosthetics for you, it's not just for wearing and for walking. It should be usable. That's the first step. The second step should be a sense of belonging. So if you go into a society or if you go into a place where there are so much of people, if you wear a cyborg kind of leg or a hand and go, then you would be finding it very difficult to mingle with others. So that's a problem that would be created for you. So you won't be feeling the sense of belonging. But when you wear the same color as per your skin colors, or when it merges with your body, then you will be feeling the sense of belonging. And that would boost your confidence indirectly. And finally, the human emotions, where you would want to socialize with people or where you want to feel not so different from the group, that would be satiated. And all these are the very best examples of emotional design. So what's emotional design? So we have heard of social design. We have heard of so much of designs. And emotional design is nothing but creating a product that would evoke a certain kind of emotion, not just happiness or not just sadness or not just alerting. Any kind of emotion if a product evokes, then that is called emotional design. So because of this, we could have a bit of emotional bonding with the users of the product. And that would actually increase your brand awareness and brand loyalty. So that is the topmost part of here. It's not a UX pyramid. It's an iceberg. But yeah, the base level would be functional. It would work. And the second experience would be usable. It would work. And also, the user can use it again and again. That is usable. The last part, or the topmost part, here I have mentioned it's emotional. But usually, people call it delightful. So the user delight is the topmost part of the iceberg, and that's where we focus on emotional design. Because the human brain, as per science, it's 80% emotional and just 20% logical. So if you saw the first example that I asked, the app screens, everyone chose A as the scariest screen and B as the emotionally safe ones. And this is the reason behind that. And there are three levels of experience in whatever user journey you go into. Let's say the first level is visceral. Visceral is the idea that you get when you first see a product. Let's say the cat looks at the box, and it would think that it is nice. And that is the pre-conscious state. Like love at first sight that we would say, that's just it. 
The second one is behavioral. So when you're actually in the experience, that is the behavioral part and that's the conscious state. And that's where you will be using the product, you'll be experiencing it and you'll know what kind of a feeling you're getting from it. And the third part is reflective. That is after using the product. Let's say after you have an experience on an app, you'll be rating the app, right? According to the experience. So that's the reflective part and that is the post-conscious stage. So all these levels of experience should be satisfied by an emotional designer. So what does it have to do with the healthcare domain? So healthcare is the most emotionally sensitive domain uh, any designer can work at. We'll be having so much of emotions like fear, anxiety, loss of trust, so much. We'll have to balance everything with the emotional design. And we'll see a small example of it. So the level one of the healthcare ecosystem would be a patient. Let's say here it's Adam, he has PTSD. So healthcare is not just for like an accident or losing an arm or leg or not that kind. This is like a psychological healthcare thing. So he has PTSD and the second level that would be surrounding the first level would be Adam's family because they are the second part that would be taking care of the patient. And third part would be the healthcare workers. Let's say here it's psychiatrists and psychologists, but there are so much of other people like pharmacists or people who help you on a daily basis. Uh, let's say a uh, work at home nurse. So all these people come under healthcare workers who helps you medically. So all these three sectors, they are the ecosystem of our healthcare domain. And everyone in this domain would have different kinds of emotions. Let's say for a patient, when you come inside a hospital, you would feel confused, like where you're going to go or what you're going to do. So that is confusion. Because of confusion, you'll be getting anxiety. Like, what should I do next? And where should I go? If you like waste time, then you would be losing maybe your health or something like that. So that is anxiety. Because of confusion and anxiety, there will be loss of trust. If there's no one to help you at a hospital, you wouldn't be staying there because you need urgent care. So you'll be going outside of that hospital and that is where loss of trust happens. And medically, if a person loses their motivation, then the patient would start to die from there. It's a strong word that I'm using, but that's the fact. So in healthcare sectors, all the patients would be alive, even if they are in ICU or even more critical stages, they would stay alive just because of their motivation. And because of all of these things, they would lose their motivation to live. So since these much of emotionally connected sector is a healthcare domain, let's see an app example of how it is solving for all these emotional people. And this is an example of Rooted. So Rooted is an app which could help you with showing a little bit of texts and images during the time of panic attacks. So people who don't get panic attacks, you're lucky because you don't know how that feels. But people who get it, they are like in a sense of danger, even though there's no one around them. So all these are mental things. But how does Rooted app solve it? There is a panic button on top, and that is a widget. So when you press the widget, then immediately you'll be going into the next screen. So the app will be asking, how are you feeling? I know this is not the best UI from the app, but this is the best concept that an app can give, an immediate solution to what you need at that time. So it would be asking how are you feeling, if you're good or not good, and then it would be showing you simple text. So it won't invalidate your feelings because we have heard people say that panic attacks are just normal. I also get panicked while I have an exam. So both are not same. So this app doesn't invalidate your feelings like that. It would consider your feelings and also there are texts and audio. So in case you're not able to read the text at that time, you can just listen to the audio. And you'll be having a trail of text, like 10 to 15 texts. And then it would be checking if you're okay. If you say you're okay, then you'll be celebrating victories. And this is a kind of gamification. So when you celebrate these victories, you'll be having a sense of delight that you have overcome the panic attack or you have overcome a very dangerous situation according to you. And just look at the overall UI. So we have heard that rounded corners would be giving you a calming sense. There are color psychology things where blue will make you feel tranquil or calm. So all these are used in these screens. And that's how Rooted solved it. So a quote from Don Norman. 
So he founded emotional design, he coined the term, and he also wrote books on it. So emotional design is not something that would make people happy. Emotional design is something that would evoke some kind of emotion or make the user feel something. And with this quote, so how can you make that possible in your jobs? Let's say design enablers. The first part is always research. This is not just the user research that we do with surveys or not just with uh, sending out forms or interviewing people. You'll have to be there, understand their facial expressions, and how do they react with every feature that they use. Maybe just record their sessions or just Loom videos would be fine. Understand their facial expressions and also understand what kind of emotion they are feeling and when they come into your app, what emotion support do they seek. It can be just a simple buying flow or a panic attack saving flow, anything. But there is some kind of emotion to each and every feature that we would be building. So research is the first part and then comes the interface. So as I said before, color psychology, the correct kind of imagery that you use. So if you use a sad image of a person, when you're going into an insurance company's page, so there are many banking apps that would be using the image of people dying and you'll be getting the money after that, that's not the best way to market. It could be the same function that after a person dies, you may be getting their money, uh, that's called life insurance, but that's not the best way you can project. You can maybe have a happy ending for that. Like a person can get the money when they are in an unhelpful situation. So if there's no one to help, then they are getting that money and that is a happy imagery that you could use. So choose that kind of imagery and judiciously use micro interactions. You can't just throw micro interactions here and there. It would feel like we are in a simulator or some kind of video games if you use so much of micro interactions. And finally, the typography. So use the same kind of typography that you would use for all kind of calming apps or whatever kind of emotion you want to evoke. And storytelling. So when a user feels very sympathetic or empathetic to your story of the brand, then the user will be coming to your brand to seek support or service from you. And it's not just about uh, projecting your brand or core values, it's also about the emotional support or value that you give to the users. So focus on that and also identify moments of delights. So let's say uh, when you order a food in Swiggy and when the order gets accepted or if it's coming near you, you'll see a small scooter zipping across the screen. So that would give you a sense of anticipation that your order is going to come and you'll be already hungry because they come late. But that anticipation creates a bit of curiosity and your food is going to arrive for you at any minute. So all these are small moments of delights. You can add that. And there are other best practices that you could follow. Let's say gamifying the experience and rewarding the users. You can't just give your service to them and like expect them to use. You'll have to reward them for using your service so that they come back to you. And putting the user in control. So yesterday's talk was so much on hyper-personalization on the panel that happened. So hyper-personalization is the next era. You'll have to give the service exactly curated for each and every user that comes back to you. And emotionally, that would make them feel connected to your brand. So that's a trick. And finally, building trust and transparency. So you can't play with users' emotions. You'll have to gain their trust. So building trust and transparency is another great use. And finally, you have done all of that. You have done your research, your UI, and storytelling, everything. How do you measure your success? These are all the words that you'll be using every day. As a UX designer, we'll be doing all these kinds of testings. So let's say, I'll just summarize it. So qualitative is like getting feedbacks from the user. And experience KPIs are like surveys that we would be rating from 1 to 10 or like multiple choice questions that we would get. So that is experience KPIs. Emotional KPIs, so biometric analysis and facial expression analysis. These both we don't do so much in our daily life, but that's a very great feature that people are using for very important features. Let's say facial expression would be analyzed when you use an app or a website, especially in the healthcare sector, so that you would know what kind of eyebrow movements or what kind of movements are happening into your wrinkles. So that would be that detail. You can read about that more on Google. So there are so much of articles on that. So that's a very important KPI for measuring success on emotional design. 
Finally, behavioral KPIs. The same click-through rate, time on task. So just measure how your user behaves with each and every feature or each and every click. And then you would know how it's going to go. Finally, this is the last slide. And I would like to conclude by saying emotional design is a very great tool that you can use. But also, it is the most sensitive tool that you can use. Because the minute you evoke a wrong emotion from the user, then they're not going to come back to you. So that's a very sensitive tool that you can use. And emotion will decide how the mind is assessing different situations and how it's deciding what way to go. So this kind of a powerful tool, emotion is like a way of life for us. And that is also the theme of this UX India, that design is a way of life. And I would say emotional design is a more critical way of life because we are emoting each and every second. Like some people could feel bored, that's an emotion, and some people could like, get it interesting, that is also an emotion. So use this, use judicially, know about this more. There are so much of steps and gimmicks that you could use in your daily life. And that's it. Thank you. Guys, we are now opening the floor to any questions. Um, this was lovely, especially because I think um, you had a particular slide in which you were talking about the progression of emotions, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like from feeling discomfort to anxiety to loss of trust, etc. I want to know how you came about with this progression. Okay. Because, um, you know, I think everybody in the room would benefit that how can we gauge this? And how can we gauge the movement of it? So, yeah. yeah. And thank you for this wonderful, wonderful presentation. I'm glad. So answering your question on that, so just go into a hospital. Like every one of us would be going into a hospital, even if we have a fever or anything. Just understand, like the first minute that you get injured, you'll be confused on what is the amount of injury that we got. Like it is severe or is it just normal? So there it starts the confusion emotion. So from there, you'll be progressing. And the final step would be the demotivation, where it'd be ending. So no one is there to help us. Just like lying on the road after an accident. So that's a very hard statement. But still, you'll be confused what just happened, because you'll be blanked out. And finally, you'll be losing the motivation on that. Because there would just be people, may these days, they are taking videos, and they are posting it before even admitting you in the hospital. So all these things, if you just study the human nuances that happen around, then you could come up with this.